drives, drives, and more drives everywhere. You're buying an ass and you're trying to decide which type of drive to fill it with and which brand to go with as well. Well, don't you worry. I know the dilemma. I've had years of NAS editing experience and luckily for you, that puts me in a good situation to give you the lowdown on the best NAS drives to use with your system. But I'm going to give you the answer right here, right now. It's Seagate's Iron Wolf drives for your NAS. Let's jump into why right now. Welcome to City Pro Tips, I'm Andy Edmondson and here we work smarter, not harder, which gives you time to be more creative. Let me first just state that I am not sponsored by Seagate for this video. I do genuinely use these drives and feel that they are a superior build and quality and reliability than some other brands that I've used in the past. All opinions in this video are from my experience alone and I have not been paid whatsoever for this video. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you the information you need on drives for your NAS systems, what the different types are, which is the best for your use case, and ultimately, which is the best drive for your NAS. But if you have not decided on a NAS route to go with, then luckily I have two videos that might just help you out with that. I have one on Synology NASs up there, and for a little bit more advanced NASs, um, I have something on QNAP right up there too. So take a look at those, they might just help you out and then come straight back here once you've decided so that we can jump into the right NAS drives for your system. All right, pro tippers, we need to jump into some background on drives so that you can make an informed decision based on knowledge. It matters because not all drives are created equally. They are in fact created for dedicated, very different purposes. Some drives are meant for always on uh, purposes such as like CCTV security systems. Others are for general low use users and others are made for more intensive and speed driven purposes. The latter is what we as video professionals are after. You will need to make the decision between HDD and SDD, though I will give you a scenario where you could use both later on. HDDs typically hold more data and are cheaper than SDDs, which are smaller and faster, but they are much, much, much more expensive, though this is coming down in price every year. Who are the manufacturers of these Iron Wolf drives? Well, they're made by a well-known and trusted computer hardware manufacturer called Seagate. These pro-level drives from Seagate also have very striking names for their products, including Iron Wolf, Firecuda, and Barracuda, although it's fair to say they deliver on the pro status and the price tag. They are well-built, reliable, and durable, which are all things that you need a NAS drive to be. And unfortunately, all the things that you do pay premium for in the tech hardware world. Of course, it's not just Seagate that are in the NAS drive game. There are many other competitors. One of the best known is Western Digital, who have a brand of NAS drive called WD Red. Up until recently, WD was the top seller and most trusted for NAS drives. I've used Red drives in my NAS systems. In fact, I've used a whole host of different brands of drives from all around the world. But I have to say, purely from my own experience, the reliability and failure tolerance, <laughs> failure tolerance, <laughs> of Seagate Iron Wolf drives is what brings me back to them time and time again. That's just my personal experience. And don't get me wrong, Iron Wolf drives can fail just like any other drive can, but that's why we back up to multiple locations, right? As I mentioned, you're gonna to need to make the decision between HDD and SDD, and it's not an easy one. You want the best storage possible for your budget available, and you ideally don't want to have to change this again for a very long time. Unfortunately, there isn't one perfect answer to this conundrum, and it very much comes down to your budget and your use case of what you're gonna be doing with your NAS day to day. HDDs usually come in either 5400 or 7200 RPM, though there are drives at 9600 and even up to 15,000 RPM. These numbers are a direct comparison of how fast the disc spins within the drive. The faster, the better. 7200 RPM HDDs are the lower end of the scale that you should be looking at when choosing drives to edit with. You can access data 33% faster from a 7200 drive than a 5400 drive. In fact, brands are starting to now ditch production of 5400 RPM drives. The one main advantage of HDDs, apart from the price, is that they can hold a tremendous amount of data. Back when I first started using NASes, you were only able to use HDDs with them really, and up to about eight terabytes per disc. 
Nowadays, you can go way, way above that. And of course you have the faster SSD storage. You can buy disks as big as 32 terabytes and NAS enclosures pretty much as standard allow 16 terabytes these days and more. That's a lot of data when you have multiple bays to fill up in your NAS and it can quickly get into the hundreds of terabytes, sometimes into the petabytes. Now, the main downside of HDDs is that they are nowhere near as fast as SDDs. Because you have a disk that is manually spinning, you are never going to be able to compete with a chip that holds all of its data without any mechanical parts to it whatsoever. When looking at video editing, we want the fastest storage possible. And when you hold it up to SDDs, that is never going to be beat with HDDs. However, that doesn't mean we shouldn't buy HDDs. And in fact, for small startup businesses, I would argue that that's a good way to go. But there is a scenario where you can buy HDDs for your cheaper storage and use SDDs for the media that you access the most and have fast access to that. It's called an SSD cache and I'll talk about that very shortly. Solid state drives are exactly what they sound to be. Solid, non-moving drives that pass data between hard mounted chips. Solid state drives are the ultimate storage medium for consumers right now. And in fact, since they've come to market, there are multiple versions available now. We started with eSATA, but there is also M.2 and another version of M.2 that's coming out in NAS systems such as QNAP. I talked about it very briefly in the DigiPro News podcast, but E1.S NVMe SSD drives are now a thing and they're now making their way into consumer storage. You'll most commonly find though that M.2 is the fastest connection for an SSD at a good price point. And luckily SSD caches mostly use this connection type. SATA is the slowest connection for an SSD, but it is still faster than a 7200 RPM HDD. Solid state drives are so much faster than HDDs for this factor that it's not even really comparable. A conventional SSD can move data three to four times faster than a HDD which is around about 500 megabytes per second. And the newer NVMe drives can move data 20 times faster, around 3,500 megabytes per second. This sounds very impressive, but it comes with a price tag. Well, it's still hotly contested, but an SSD cell usually has around 3000 write cycles. This doesn't sound like much at first, but the controller of an SSD disk is very good at making sure that it is as efficient as possible with which cells it writes to, to avoid cell death. Even if you were to read and write to an SSD 24 hours a day, you would still have decades worth of use. Right. So what is this great technology called SSD caching? Well, in its most basic terms, it's using a HDD and an SSD in a NAS together and using the HDD as what we call cold storage and storing all of the data that we don't access very often or archive projects all on the HDDs, which is lower priced and you can have more of it and using the SDDs to cache all of the data that we access frequently to make sure that we can access it faster and therefore we only need to buy a little bit of it because it's a higher price. The NAS enclosures these days cleverly analyze which data you are accessing the most and therefore have a copy on the SSD or depending on which NAS you use, um, QNAPs for example use Qtier where they can move it between the SSD and the HDD. There isn't, a, you don't have to replicate data. It's a win-win situation, fast access, lower costs. This is the crucial question, and the answer is simple. It's peace of mind. Having worked with NAS systems for the last decade and with a variety of models and disk types, I can tell you that you cannot put a price on data security. I have had the unfortunate experience of losing 40% of my data due to data corruption when I used a cheaper brand within a NAS system. Irreversible, couldn't get it back. It was an absolute nightmare and never want to go there again. Never, 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 never. From then, I have always looked at the best storage that I can buy with the budget that I have available. I can honestly say at this point, I've not had an Iron Wolf drive go bad on me yet, but it could happen. But up to this point, I haven't. For smaller NAS systems, the best NAS hard drive that I can recommend would be something like a 12, 16 or 18 terabyte Iron Wolf HDD. 18 is the largest size that Seagate do in the Iron Wolf normal models, but you can get up to 20 in the Iron Wolf Pro models that I'll talk about in a minute. Go with the best that your budget can afford. Every Iron Wolf and Iron Wolf Pro drive comes with its own health management and recovery system when installed in compatible NASs. For comparison, the, the 12 terabyte Iron Wolf HDD 
retails at around about $210. That does seem like a hefty investment for storage space, though it was a lot more years ago. But when you have multiple bays filled with 12 terabyte disk, you're not gonna need to upgrade that for a long time. I'll drop links for all of the drives that I'm mentioning in the description below. Have a look, see what size you need, what the prices are, and you might even find some deals. If you can afford it and have four bays or more, then investing in SSDs from the start could be the ultimate experience for your video editing needs. Ironwolf SATA SSDs come in substantially smaller sizes than the HDD counterparts, so you need to be sure that you're not going to want to upgrade that storage anytime soon past like 12 terabytes if you've got a four bay nas because four terabytes is the highest you can get and that 12 terabytes is based on you having a raid level setup without any raid you could get 16 but i wouldn't advise that they do also do a 3.84 terabyte ssd which is a little different and has more endurance hours out of it so that's probably the one that i'd go for even though you get slightly less storage space out of it the 3.84 and the four terabyte iron wolf ssds Retail for around about $550 to $600. Yeah, that's, that's a lot for storage, but it is fast storage and it's reliable storage. You really do get what you'd pay for when it comes to NAS storage. As I mentioned, if you have the ability to build and utilize an SSD cache in your NAS or have the ability to add in a M2 slot within, then it is advantageous to do so and will boost your video editing experience. There's also great cost benefits to doing this too. Due to their form factor, they are really quite small. M.2 SSDs hold even less data than the SATA SSDs do. The largest IronWolf M.2 drive that you can get is 1.92 terabytes. Even with just one of these disks in your NAS system, the efficiency boost that you could get is well worth the $350 price tag, even if every other drive in your NAS is a HDD. For larger NAS systems above four bays, then you have to start looking at the pro models of the IronWolf drives with the added security of the five year warranty over the three year warranty it's worth the extra investment because we know that drives do fail the iron wolf pro models also have the ability to store more than the normal iron wolf models do as i mentioned the highest the iron wolf pro models can go up to is 20 terabytes and two terabytes is not to be sniffed at but do check the compatibility of your nas system with how large a capacity drive it can accept if it can't accept a 20 terabyte drive then you don't want to go and buy a 20 terabyte drive you want to get the highest that it will accept for your money and for an example a 16 terabyte ironwolf pro drive retails for around about 280 dollars ultimately it's up to you where you put your budget but as my motto here is work smarter not harder i can only advise that ironwolf will save you a headache in the future and allow you to work more efficiently which gives you time to be more creative. Now you know your NASes and which storage you're going to get for your NAS system, it's time to start thinking about how to utilize your NAS for the most efficient setup. Did you know you can use your Synology or QNAP NAS to edit, design remotely from anywhere? Oh, you don't believe me? Check this out, I'll show you how to do it.